Holy crap. Okay. We're going to talk about James Bond, No Time to Die. Huge spoilers in this video. If you haven't seen the movie or you haven't heard about this movie, I can't believe this, but I, I shouldn't be surprised. This is Neon, this is Clownfish TV, and this is bullshit. Uh, absolute bullshit, but it doesn't surprise me at all, given the way that uh, you know Hollywood has been going with strong male characters. They have to be sidelined, they have to be killed off, they have to be replaced. Uh, yeah, let's talk about James Bond. Let's talk about what happened. Again, huge spoilers. I haven't seen the film yet. I just heard about it this morning. A uh, hat tip to Martin for sending this over. Uh, I had no idea that this is what they were going to do with James Bond, but I, I should have figured. Uh, before we get into it any further, please subscribe. For more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys, over 236,000 subs. Thank you for the support. Geeky is sitting this one out. She's out and about today. She's she's very busy. Uh, she'll be back later, though, I promise. Um, but we do talk about pop culture, talk about uh, you know movies and Hollywood. And I haven't really been talking a lot about James Bond because I knew that the latest movie was going to be, as the director uh, said, a post-Me Too James Bond and I'm like, well, I don't think James Bond can exist in a post Me Too world because James Bond gets a lot, right? But, you know, as far as I know, 99% of the time it's consensual. Even though the director of this movie said that James Bond was basically a rapist. I mean, are, are you freaking kidding me? So anyway, when you have a problematic character like this, you know, who can't exist in the current year, what you do, you fucking kill him. They fucking killed James Bond. Yes, they killed him in this movie. Not kidding. I was shocked. I was floored. I, I, I seriously, I'm like, are you kidding me? So just add James Bond's carcass to the pile of, of strong male movie characters and pop culture characters who have been destroyed in the last five or six years. We had Luke Skywalker killed so Ray could rise to the top. We had He-Man killed so side shave Tila and her girlfriend, and I'm sorry, they're totally a thing, right? They're totally a thing. Uh, Tila and her girlfriend could take over Masters of the Universe, and now we have James Bond uh, Lashana Lynch, I think her name is Lashana Lynch, uh, taking up the mantle of 007 and they kill James Bond. I don't even know what to say anymore. I mean, I used to think that like, well, you know, a one-off, maybe they're just trying to keep audiences on their toes. No, this is deliberate. This is absolutely deliberate. This is called, you know, every quote unquote problematic male character has to die. Oh yeah. Terminator. We forgot about John Connor. Yeah. We got to gun down John Connor in the first couple minutes of the last Terminator movie too. Aren't you angry? Aren't you tired of this? I mean, seriously. I mean, if, if it couldn't be any clearer, I, I used to try to give Hollywood the benefit of the doubt. Like, well, maybe they're just trying to, you know, shake things up a little, you know, whatever. No, it's, it's literally every strong male iconic character is getting offed, sidelined or replaced. And look, that's not against diversity and inclusion. You absolutely can have diversity and inclusion without pushing out all the old school characters. Doctor Who regenerates from an old white guy to a woman. Uh, you know, it's like in the, the series suffers for it. It shouldn't have surprised me at all, given that the co-writer of, of this uh, movie is Phoebe Waller-Bridge, right? Um... And she is going to be co-starring in the new Indiana Jones movie that supposedly is going to see, supposedly is going to see uh, the Indiana Jones mantle being taken up by her character. I mean, seriously, guys, seriously, this is, this is so freaking ridiculous. I mean, this article, and I haven't really been following it because I'm like, well, it'll just be kind of like, you know, James Bond's not going to be getting any, he's not, whatever. The critics, will, God, look at these ads on the Daily Mail. Look at these ads on the Daily Mail. Holy hell. The best Bond in years. Critics love it. No Time to Die is branded brilliant, epic, and awesome by devoted British fans hours after cinematic release, yet others claim 007 is absolutely ruined by super woke spin on the sleuth. 
Uh, after the world premiere in the Royal Albert Hall on Tuesday, critics lavished praise. Of course they did. They love it. The critics love it. They love it when they destroy all the man babies' toys. We've seen this time and time and time again. I mean, this is bullshit. Now, in the case of, you know, this incarnation of James Bond, Daniel Craig's James Bond, he, he is a reboot of James Bond. So it's possible now that Amazon has uh, bought MGM, it's very possible that, you know, they could just re-reboot James Bond, but I have a feeling that they're not going to, I think, or if they do, he's going to come back as a, a kinder, gentler character. You know, no time to die. There's no time for male action heroes. So let's, let's talk about these spoilers and the guardian. Again, I got to give a hat tip uh, to Martin. I, I, I really have been checked out from James Bond. Uh, I have for a while. Cause I, I just had no interest in this movie. I'm like, Oh God, it's going to be woke. I had no idea it was this bad though, guys. I really didn't. And I actually did like Daniel Craig's bond. At least the first couple bond movies I thought were okay. I, I didn't watch the last one, but I thought Casino Royale was really good. Um, fuck this. <laughs> fuck this. No time to die. The ending, the villain and the bi very big surprise discussion with spoilers. Daniel Craig is double O done. His services to her majesty are complete and he's not coming back as anything other than a flashback where no time to die sits in the grand ranking of James Bond films is now up to fans to decide. But one thing is for certain, like the non Eon Sean Connery picture, never say never again, or uh, the 1967 Casino Royale, Craig's swan song will forever be remembered as something unique. Maybe even a franchise asterisk. Uh, colors outside the lines in ways we haven't seen before, and this may lead to some consternation. Here's what we couldn't stop talking about. Wait, Bond is dead. Yes. Uh, Bond is dead. No, not in a jokey way like you only live twice. He's blasted the smithereens with missiles. Faces annihilation with some sadness, but also a proper stiff upper lip. Says goodbye to his one true love and to his obligations to Great Britain and the free world. It's undeniably moving, but I question, and perhaps you do too, whether it's right. It's coming from The Guardian. What are we as a society losing if we can't rely on James Bond to get out of any tough situation? Surely Daniel Craig uh, and the producers wanted to put some punctuation at the end of this, this more serious post 9-11 era of James Bond, but is fundamentally altering the DNA of their character the way to go. The Guardian is like, is this smart? Is this smart to kill off James Bond? Are there not some lines in the sand you don't cross? This goes beyond, oh, he doesn't get the girl, or even, oh, the villain escapes his clutches. This is taking a character that has been presented thus far as a god, and therefore a little ridiculous, and making him mortal. It's a big change and runs the risk of backlash. You don't say. We're going to talk about that. I don't want to sound like Kathy Bates in Misery, but I suspect many will feel this slap in the face. Bond needs to escape because these movies are escapism. This is coming from The Guardian, guys. The Guardian, which is pretty far left, is like Bond needs to be Bond. Let other movies have realism. Let Bond be Bond. And let's make sure the producers of the next Indiana Jones film don't get any ideas. Too fucking late. Fleabag is involved in that one, too. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. They talk about Bond having a daughter. Um, it's just a number, just a number, just like it's just a mantle. And this, this is the trend. Again, this push for diversity and inclusion has basically been a push for uh, exclusion, pushing out established characters. This is not the way to do it. Guys, this is not the way to do it. You pull up more chairs to the table. You don't kick the legs out from underneath other people's chairs. You don't have to do that. You can have James Bond be James Bond and bring in new characters that aren't straight white men and make them interesting characters. You don't have to destroy James Bond in the process. You don't have to destroy Luke Skywalker. You know, you don't have to make Doctor Who a woman just because. You, you, could, you know, we had Romana. Why don't you bring Romana into it and then do a spinoff with Romana? You know, I mean, this is deliberate destruction of 
smashing, smashing the pop culture patriarchy. That's exactly what this is. And I used to kind of give the benefit of a doubt. I, I can't do that. I can't do that anymore. This is deliberate. This is deliberate, malicious destruction of pop culture to get a few high fives on Twitter. That's what this is. And you're going to have, you're going to have decades of damage done. Billions and billions of dollars lost because you've defaced and destroyed these timeless, once timeless properties. Again, nobody's saying you can't have diversity and inclusion, but destroying classic characters, beloved characters, and sacrificing them, I guess, on the altar of woke, this is not the way to do it. And even the Guardian's calling it out. Like, this is some grade A bullshit. Uh, so they talk about Lashana Lynch. We think she's a typical James Bond hookup and there's no time to smooch. And it turns out she's the new 007. Bond doesn't like being replaced. He also recognizes there are only nine 00 options. Uh, Craig Lynch and Fukunaga play this development delicately. He's our hero, but Lynch, a black woman, is the future. And it's clear that she's more than capable. Well, that's fine. You can bring in a new character. But you don't have to fucking kill James Bond. I thought that they would maybe retire him or it would be a temporary thing that she would be, you know, he he left and uh, she she took the, the number and then he would come back or he would kind of go off into the sunset and retire. I mean, I knew this was his last movie, but fucking killing him? Come on. There's some light ribbing between the two and they recognize one another's strengths. By the end, they are a team and it seems likely she'll be back. She'll be back in the next chapter. So she's coming back and he's fucking dead. What number she'll have and whether or not there will still be a James Bond at all remains to be seen. The reports from those who sat through all the credits confirm the phrase, James Bond will return is displayed. I personally didn't see it with all the action on screen. There was no time to pee. What's the rent on Evil Lair? Okay, they talk about Rami Malek, who I actually like him. He's, he's pretty good. Um, they talk about the Avengers Assemble. Everybody worked as a team. You know, it wasn't just James Bond saving the day. So Bond is really dead. Sorry, don't mean to repeat myself, but let's get back to the first one. Yes, Bond is really dead. I can't quite get over it either. The reason he accepts his fate and lets uh, airstrike missiles blow him to bits is because Rami Malek has poisoned him with nanobots. What is this? Fucking G.I. Joe? Rise of Cobra? Everything's nanobots? If Bond lives, he'll never be able to touch his, his love or their daughter again. He has loved and lost before. Yes, his wife, his wife died in another movie. Um, yeah. Every movie, it seems, concludes with him escaping with someone who is a natural fit, a true love, and then she disappears. That's true. Not seeing red. So it gets, it's even worse. It's not just the ending of No Time to Die that breaks tradition. The gun barrel sequence, arguably the most iconic opening visual in all of cinema, is tweaked for some strange reason. For the first time in 25 films, there's no blood after Bond fires his shot. What? What the fuck is this? And then we got the director. Bond was basically a rapist. Sean Connery's James Bond was basically a rapist. Oh, for fuck's sake. Pussy galore need to be cured of her lesbianism. I mean, come on. <sighs> Uh, but the critics are raving. They are. Um, they are. Of course they are. They love it. They love it. The critics love it when pop culture icons are destroyed. They love it. They get off on writing reviews, telling people how awful they are. You know, and maybe that maybe the movie, maybe the movie is is decent as a movie, but, um, you know, I haven't seen it, so I can't, I can't say, but I don't want to see it. <laughs> here's some of the, here's some of the backlash. Absolutely ruined. Shocking. Never seen a cinema. So silent, almighty mistake, heartbroken. I'm speechless, devastated. Why can't people write films? Well, anymore. I saw the new James Bond and the ending is like, eh, mission impossible is the best franchise. I love it. Standards still high everywhere else. Ugh. I really enjoyed half the film. The second half, however, has utterly ruined the character for me. Sounds like the last Jedi. Who's seen the new Bond film? I must admit I was disappointed. And it's her. It's fucking Fleabag. And she's involved in Indiana Jones, guys. They're going to they're gonna off Dr. Jones and make her the new Indiana Jones. You watch. You watch. That's the rumor. I can almost guarantee it. 
And there's no reason to do this. There's no reason to do this other than to smash the pop culture patriarchy. That's that's literally the only reason that this happens time and time and time and time again. It's just it's just it, it's not even shocking anymore. It's expected. Like I, I said before, Lucasfilm could come out at this point. Lucasfilm could come out and say, hey, guess what, guys? Uh, it's canon that Luke Skywalker is a black lesbian in a wheelchair. And I'd be like, yeah, of course, of course it is. Because there are no rules anymore. It's just all up in the air. You just, the only rule is we can't have a straight white dude current year being the lead character of an established franchise. It's a problem. You know, instead of making new franchises, which you think would be easier, right? Well, okay, you don't like James Bond. Let's come up with another character. Let's, uh, you know, introduce a new character in this franchise to, to you know, sh- uh, he, she, or they can, can go off and have their own adventures, but you got to create interesting new characters. And again, the people that do this, you know, they're, they're parasitic. They're not actually creating anything. They're latching on to other people's franchises, destroying them, laughing at you as they do it. And then moving on to something else and destroying something else. They move from franchise to franchise. And again, I used to think that maybe this was blown out of proportion, but I've I've seen this happen too many times. You know, every, every franchise with a strong male character, nearly every one, is problematic current year, current year Hollywood, and they have to destroy the male lead somehow. Either the personality or just, you know, sideline them or just fucking off them. And we know what's going to happen with Marvel we, we already see that almost all the Marvel characters, all the original Avengers are getting replaced or sidelined. You know, I mean, this is this is it, man. This is what Hollywood's going to give us. And, uh, you know, again, I'm not saying we can't be more diverse and inclusive, but you don't have to destroy legacy characters in the process of doing that. You can pull up another chair to the table. This is not the way. This is not the way to do it. This is malicious. This is deliberate. It's fucking awful. And I cannot wait until this phase of entertainment passes. But I think all these franchises are going to be completely destroyed when by the time it's 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 you know it's gonna be too late. I mean that possibly, possibly they're walking back Doctor Who, bringing Russell T. Davies in, but I, I don't I don't think it can be saved. Um every legacy franchise has been defaced and destroyed in like five years. Five or six years. That's all it took to destroy decades, decades of pop culture. So, and the people that you're trying to please, they don't give a shit. They're more interested in reading Tumblr fanfics and shit. They don't, they don't care. They don't care. But your, your audience that you've cultivated, they care. Uh, They care a lot and you're going to hear from them and then you're going to belittle them for caring and then they'll stop caring. And then you're going to be in an even worse place than if they cared at all. Like people have moved on from Star Wars. They've moved on from Doctor Who. They've moved on from Star Trek. They've moved on from Marvel and DC Comics, you know, and you're not going to have anything. But good luck with that. Good luck with that. I'm going to wrap this one up. Ran a little long. Um, but just, I, I, you know, I shouldn't be surprised. I shouldn't be surprised, but I am. <laughs> I didn't think they'd be this stupid. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>